Hey everyone, Rascal here. And Mama, welcome to our podcast. Today we're covering the classic animated movie from DreamWorks, The Curse of the Were-Rabbit. And it's based on the lovable claymation series. Waz and his loyal dog, Gromit, set out to discover the mystery behind the garden sabotage that plagues the village and threatens the annual giant vegetable growing contest. Mm -hmm. Before we start, be sure to like, subscribe, and click the notification bell to get updates on future podcasts and roll the pause video. Absolutely. Love this movie. I remember originally seeing this movie when it came out, and then we also got it on DVD. Yes. So, this is a fantastic movie. Oh, and... We also went to see it later in theaters um, because they would play discount movies and you could see older movies. And we saw it then as well, right. years after it came out. Right. So, yes. Fun, fun, fun. Now, we have seen some of the original little shorts they've had and even some of they streamed on Amazon at a later point. But this was the first major motion picture for not only Artaman, but for just the show. And then later on, they would have a second movie that didn't go to theaters, but it would look, took a little more darker direction. But I will say that because of the werewolf is definitely more uh, family friendly. It sort of plays with the idea of it being a horror movie, but it's not really a horror movie. With uh, scenes of it going into stuff and the vegetable being eaten, act like it's being it's people and it's just vegetables being eaten, <laughs> and you don't know what monster is doing it. <laughs> this movie is perfect for our British week since it shows quintessential British life. Mm -hmm. And it has some excellent British actors who make guest appearances as voice actors. You have Ray Fiennes as Victor Quartermain mm -hmm. and Helena Bonham Carter as Lady Campanola Tottington. All right. And the late Peter Salas, I think that was his mm -hmm. name, Salas, as Wallace. You have Liz Smith, who's um, known for her journalism as Mrs. Mulch. And you have a host of other fun and wonderful characters that are memorable, voiced by a, a, another host of British voice actors. Right. So I remember when I first heard about this movie and learning it was done in claymation and I couldn't imagine how it was going to turn out. I do remember seeing um, other shows like they had a Christian show that was called um, Davy and Goliath. Mm -hmm. It was a boy and his dog. Everyone's heard about Gumby, even if you didn't watch it when it came out originally. We've seen Gumby. We've seen Gumby uh, being um, parodied on Saturday Night Live, and you've I, you know seen documentaries on it. So Claymation has had some times where the shows are being stand out, mm -hmm. but I couldn't imagine an entire movie. And when I saw it, I was not pleasantly surprised. I was thrilled because it's absolutely fantastic and brilliantly done. Yes. And the entire film is just fun from the minute it starts to the minute it ends. It's just really, 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 really fun. And you see now people go back to movies like, oh my gosh, why don't people talk about this movie mm -hmm. anymore? Because remember, there was a time when a lot of people talked about it. And mm -hmm. now it's sort of like fading to the background because of, you know, bigger companies having bigger movies out. But for the time this came out, it still, I think, would be like a time was classic because the jokes and the story and everything still holds up it acts like as i said like one of those older horror movies like there's a monster attacking and instead of taking people out it's eating people's gardens <laughs> and you need to find out who or where this monster came from and you have to we can't we don't want to do the big reveal unless you see the movie because you haven't you don't want to spoil it we yes. know the movie's older but you don't want to spoil it because you you'll find out where the were rabbit comes from it's that fantastic it's something that you have to see and experience for yourself and you're right you don't want to get spoilers it's so much fun and knowing just how long it takes to do just one scene in this style is a testament to the love the studio has for not only claymation itself mm -hmm. but for the story and for the characters because you were telling me that it's very time consuming yes it's not like when you do stop motion or um, hand drawn it takes a lot of time to get moving that fluidly whether you're by one person or by many many people it takes a lot of time to do that there's also times where they might take out some scenes that they feel are needed for the movie and then that kind of pushes them back because they got to replace them with something else. Mm -hmm. Now for here, Walls Girl always had like different occupations and different things. So here they were rabbit exterminators, <laughs> but they didn't kill the rabbits or anything. Right. They just like would take them off people's hands and be like infesting the yards. 
they would like uh, vacuum them up and then they would keep them and they would feed them and they were trying to they were making a machine where it would kind of give suggestive a suggestive thought to rabbits where they didn't like carrots and vegetables <laughs> where they would find them so disgusting they wouldn't go into the yards and do it anymore and that was a humane way of taking care of it well they eat that as a, a judge me what are you gonna do that right <laughs> but if you, that's supposed to be the base the basic start of it is the teaching the rabbits not to like vegetables so that they don't go and eat the people's stuff in the gardens because like we said with this uh growing contest coming about it sort of like highlights with now what happens in the u.s where people the biggest prize of where the things go the most biggest monster sized vegetable or fruit you can possibly do mm-hmm. and that's kind of what happens here this was this little this town's little festival right and they would have giant pumpkins giant eggplants that would be like 30 30 uh, feet long, feet and meters long, and they would just hide them in the yard, cover them with blankets, they water them, talk to them, and so like, these aren't like animals. <laughs> <laughs> and and this would be their, their prizes, and they were trying to protect them from getting eaten by the were-rabbit. Definitely. I think one thing that really was brilliant about this style is how the faces of every character was expressive, even Gromit. Right. And of course, Grandma didn't talk, but the expressions that went on his face, oh my gosh, they had you laughing so hard. It was like he was talking. Right. And you could hear him, like when he would have these expressions, you could imagine what would come out of his mouth if he actually spoke. And every character was expressive. And all of the emotions and things that came through in the voice came through in the expressions of the characters. And it was just wonderfully done. And in a lot of animation you see now, not anime because they really do stick to having so much expression and emotion in the faces Mm -hmm. but in animation unfortunately in this country they tend to not have a lot of expressions in the faces anymore and you miss it because you love that connection when you not only hear the voice actor conveying it but then you see the animation and the face matching it, it just makes it so much better. Right. And this movie was brilliant doing it. Absolutely right. brilliant. That's part of why when they did Sean the Shaun the Sheep, the whole movie was fantastic because yes. the characters either just made little noises or they didn't talk at all. And everything was going by the physical comedy or their faces. Mm-hmm. So for here it worked perfectly for Gromit. And we will be talking about Shaun the Sheep this week for our British animation week. Right. And there's also one scene here that's probably one of the best scenes of the movie is when he's having a fight with the antagonist dog and they're in this plane and they're kind of like at each other's throats. He's trying trying not to get thrown off the plane and thing and then the plane stops and it's one of those little um, uh, rides that you have outside a store you put a quarter in and when it stopped, uh, Grant was checking to see if he had some change to keep it going and then the dog just threw the shovel to him. He got a little coin purse <laughs> and uh, picked out a quarter, put it in the machine, and then they started back fighting. <laughs> oh my god, the dog has a coin purse. He's so dainty. Get <laughs> oh, this movie is brilliant. If you have not seen Wallace and Gromit, you're really missing out. Give it a view. I think it's still on Netflix. And if not, it's available for sale on Amazon, mm-hmm. and it's on Prime Video for sure. Right. But if you haven't seen it, you really are missing out. And it's one of those movies that you got to put on your must-see list. Mm-hmm. You will wonder, why did you not watch it sooner? And how did you get by without seeing this movie? It's just that fantastic. And if you have seen Wallace and Gromit, let us know what you think in the comments below. If you own it, if you wish there were a sequel, if you've seen any of the other movies made by this studio. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're so glad that they're back because I know you remember some time ago there was a fire and everything burned. And we're just so glad that they're like the Phoenix and have raised from the ashes and now they're back to give us more movies that we love. Right. Oh, and be sure to like, subscribe, and click the location bell to get updates on future podcasts and more to pause videos. Absolutely. So thank you so much for watching. I'm Oscar Entertainment. And I'm Mom Entertainment. Have a fantastic day. Peace. In the mountaintops, rivers, and streams. Plucking sunlight from the sky in my pocket. Give it to you later on in the form of a locket.